would like to start with a sentence I said yesterday in the opening speech, because as Spider-Man said, with power comes responsibility. So, the next two people I'm going to introduce here on stage strongly believe, and I couldn't agree more, chefs are not a collection of recipes. Because we have a responsibility, and therefore, the next two people are going to talk about non-profit, about food, soul, and the roots. So, I would like to highly welcome Massimo, Massimo Butura and Jessica Roswell here with us on stage. Thank you. Stage is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Guys, after so many years, it's still, uh, still uh, very emotional to come on stage and speak with uh, even just one person that is the right person and uh, touch his heart or arrive in the right, uh, in the right side of the, of the, of the soul. And uh, for this reason, I wrote uh, something. Uh, uh, I wrote something that I think is uh, could be the the point, the real point of what it is the future. Our our to you know talk today as a, um, as this um, title, no future, future. It's culture, knowledge, consciousness, sense of responsibility. So I wrote uh, something about uh, what I feel future is. And uh, for the young generation, it's very important to hear this and make it yours. The future cannot be lived in. It's a dream. You can imagine it, you can prepare it, you can build it. You cannot be aggressive with the future, nor can you avoid it. You cannot fight it, you need to learn to love it. Courage is the name of the future. Courageous are its imaginary citizens. It's so difficult to predict, even to accept it, and almost impossible to anticipate it. We need to dream it and prepare a place for it in our souls, like planting a seed in our hearts. It cannot longer be an abstraction. It must become a walking companion. With each step, the instantaneous anticipation of the next step. And perhaps in the exact moment, we can reconcile that the journey will take us far away because the future is not a place, it's a state of mind. This is what I think about future. In Modena, we still look at the world uh, from a critical point of view, not a nostalgic. Culture has become uh, our motivational force behind uh, the evolution of our kitchen. And uh, culture brings knowledge. Knowledge leads to consciousness. With consciousness comes a sense of responsibility. Everything we think, see, and learn uh, gets squeezed in our cuisine. And it's important to plant seeds and, and uh, build bridges between us and between the world. And uh, because food is not only about the quality of the ingredients, the idea of staying there and doing this and that, but it's the quality of the ideas that will shape the future. And the great ideas are always at the beginning of big revolutions. Jessica, it's your turn. Thank you. Hi, everybody. We are going to go back to March of 2020. 
As you all probably know, in Italy, we went into one of the strictest lockdowns in the entire world at this point. Uh, in Modena alone, we're about 85 chefs. We come from all over the world. So we're away from our families. We are each other's families. We are together every single day. And so going from that closeness that we feel to the very next day being isolated in our apartments for us was a very difficult time. We were really looking for ways to uh, stay connected and really looking for ways to continue focusing on the future. Not an easy task, uh, but we got a solution to that. And it was just a couple weeks after the first lockdown in Modena. And it was a very simple text message that Massimo sent to us. We have this big group chat on WhatsApp. And all it said, it was very simple, it had an image. It said, the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, everybody make a dish. And that was it. And we knew exactly what Massimo was doing. He knew that culture at that time was the only thing that could keep us united and could keep us focused. So we take this album this album by the Beatles, one of the most important albums of the 1960s, the beginning of this bright and flourishing British psychedelia. Uh, but most importantly, this is an album that the Beatles wrote after taking a six-month break from tour, where they all went their separate ways. They took some time alone. They traveled around the world. And when they came back together again after those six months, they then collaborated in ways that they had never collaborated before. And we can hear so much of their, that individual influence of each different team member track after track on this album. It doesn't stop there. This album was also one of the most important because it was really bridging a gap between this pop culture and popular music with high art. That's something that had never happened before and it was really reflecting counterculture, you know, the youth. And so we took all of these different aspects of the album. We were inspired. We were thrown back into culture. We were working, but we were working all together isolated in our apartments, but together. Because we were busy focusing on the future, we would be video messaging every single day, constantly chatting. We were creating a menu. We were creating this menu all together. At the end of those three months of lockdown, we came back to the restaurant with an extremely strong team. We didn't lose one single chef off of our ranks. And on the first day back in the kitchen, we presented all of our dishes to Massimo in that kitchen. Looking at them all, he was so blown away with our collaboration that on the spot he decided that we would reopen Osteria Francescana with our menu as the opening tasting menu. And he named that menu after the second track of the album, which is called With a Little Help from My Friends. Culture is what kept our team together for those three months of lockdown. The dish that we be, will be presenting to you today is inspired by a track on the album. It's called Fixing a Hole. And this is uh, written by Paul McCartney. He sings of his desire to break out of the mold. No, be different than everybody else. Uh, you know, live a different life, but get over a lot of the insecurities that come with uh, being different. So what we've done in this dish is we've taken a very common ingredient. It's found all over Europe. Every single country for the last 1,000 years has been using bacala. This is salted cod. And we're taking this cod and we wanted to bring it to places it could have never imagined going. So first, we take it and we marinate it in salt and honey of our own production. We then roast it, and then we smoke it. And then we bring it through the south of Italy. So of course, it's picking up those sweet and bitter almonds from Noto. And then it continues on. In this case, changing with the seasons. But now it's going all the way to India, where it's picking up beautiful flavors of red curry. This is where George Harrison went to get inspired during their six-month break. It then comes back to Italy again, and that's when we lay it in a field of aromatic herbs and flowers because that's probably where a cod should not be. Uh, but to us, it's perfectly right just like that. This dish that you see is the summer version of the dish done with green Thai curry. And the dish that Alan is plating right now is our autumn dish that's made with the red curry, root vegetables, uh, porcini mushrooms, squash. It's like the field in Maria Luigia right now. You know, autumn style with uh, transform all the the um, the following the seasons and transform uh, uh, the dish into bite uh, a leaves of uh, a crunchy, beautiful leaves of uh, of the oaks. Especially in this moment, we are playing a lot of respect to the oaks because uh, with the tornado that uh, really hits us in. Uh, 
in the farm. Uh, there were five uh, more than bicentenary oaks. The tornado was coming directly into the house. These five oaks, they protect the house. They made uh, the tornado spinning and the tornado changed direction. And uh, Maria Luisa was saved. And, the, and for us, in our mind, in our heart, the oaks, they gave their lives to save Casa Maria Luisa. Mm. So this is what we pay respect to. And this dish, this dish, that entire menu, uh, is an expression of the time that it was made uh, and of the album that inspired this free speech, this free thought, this free way of looking at things. But this menu, again, was able to transcend all of these physical barriers that separated us, and it brought our team back together again. That is the power of culture. That is the beginning we start to see the power of food. So this is, um, 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 so what we did, what we, uh, they, they brought uh, uh, in a Surgeon Pepper, they brought the old menu, um, uh, transforming like in the moment in which uh, you couldn't travel, this was 2020, you couldn't travel with flavors, uh, with, uh, with your planes and, and guy, like, like before we were do doing, you know, we, we, we create a menu in which uh, we made everyone travel around the world uh, and uh, understand and imagine through different uh, flavors and different dishes like uh, losing the sky without diamonds, uh, <laughs> strawberry fields, but not forever. And uh, this is, uh, 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 you were traveling around the world and this is, uh, you arrive in Thai, uh, my mom arrived in Thai with bacala, uh, back to Sicily, the old uh, uh, red curry is transformed uh, in a Sicilian style with uh, almond milk and, uh, and uh, up to Maria Luisa, uh, so our country place, you know, with all the, f in that case, uh, the green one, all the fresh herbs in here, with all the um, uh, earthy flavor that transforms and gives you the perception of digging the earth and eat earth and uh, dry leaves. This is uh, the first course. Second, it's uh, uh, awareness leads to knowledge, and with knowledge, the sense of responsibility. You know, uh, we, in 2015, uh, we create a, a very special place, a very special project. Uh, it's called Refettorio, and uh, the project is Food for Soul. Food for Soul, uh, it's uh, it become, uh, now is a, a global project. W many of you are involved uh, in this project, but for the one that uh, they, don't, they don't know about the project, it's, uh, it came out uh, during the Universal Exposition, where the theme was uh, Feed the Planet. And, um, and uh, what we did, what, uh, what I had in mind, uh, uh, talking with uh, Carlin Petrini, the head the man uh, behind uh, Slow Food, uh, he was telling me all these numbers uh, uh, about uh, you know what was gonna, what was happening uh, in uh, in um, in the world. So we are producing right now food uh, for 12 billion people. We are just seven billion on Earth. And 860 million people, they don't have anything to eat. We waste 1.3 billion tons of food every year. That means more than 33% of the production. So to me, the natural answer to what was uh, Feed the Planet, the theme of the Universal Exposition, was fighting food waste. And uh, so we create this... Uh, Beautiful project uh, with uh, um, involving not just the team of Francescana, but all the most influential chefs in the world. And uh, after uh, seven years, uh, last year we have um, we have now uh, 14 refectorio all over the world. Uh, last year alone, we rescue. I have numbers here. <laughs> You know, 955 tons of food, 
2.5 million meals were served, and we involve 100,000 chefs and volunteers all over the world. So I think this is uh, the real meaning of uh, Feed the Planet. That is not just a universal exposition team, but I think uh, is the, the most natural answer to what it's, what's, what's happening now. As the tornado in Maria Luigia that never, ever be happen, uh, or the overflow or the crazy um, things that are happening in the world, there are still people, they don't think there's a climate change uh, 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 around the world. And, uh, but we, we, what we do is like, uh, I use my credibility, the credibility that I have in the world, uh, to just uh, spread the word, building bridges, connect uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, plant seeds uh, in the mind of the people, especially the young generation, they really care about this. And uh, food waste right now is the first cause of climate change. So we all have to be, as Joseph Boyce was always saying, we are the revolution and we all have to be together because uh, everybody wants to change the world, but if you can change your own neighborhood, you will be happy about that. So we have to do it all together. Um, the next course uh, that we present uh, is a reflection about uh, it's, a, it's, it's an evolution that uh, happened in Osteria Franciscana in the second uh, tasting menu after, uh, the, after the, the COVID, the lockdown. The first one was uh, with a little help from my friend. The second one was with a little help from my friend, but stage two. And uh, what we did, uh, we had to build a future. You have to know where you come from. If you don't know where you come from, how can you build your future? You know, it's important. And when I was in the kitchen and I was uh, talking with uh, 70 guys of my 70 chefs, I was like, uh, I was very, uh, I was asking questions. And uh, most of them, especially stagiaire and commie, they didn't know about our history. And we built, uh, you know, a new menu uh, a, a, using a, an exercise that is a creative exercise uh, in which uh, I start reading, reading and reading and reading for days and sharing recipes from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s of Italian chefs. And uh, at that point, um, we create, a, uh, we, we rebuild in a contemporary way using a cultural biodiversity of each one of our team. Um, the contemporary Italian cuisine of the last 40 years. Where uh, there was a, the final course was uh, a carbonara, no? Uh, um, and uh, we, we didn't know what, what to do as a dessert, but uh, we always, uh, with our dessert, always break the border between sweet and savory. And uh, at that point, uh, uh, something came in my mind and I said, uh, we have to do something that reminds uh, what we were doing uh, at the opening of uh, the second um, project that was in Rio de Janeiro. In Rio de Janeiro, we did the opening. Uh, we, we, were at the, uh, we were ready for the opening, and I decided to create, uh, you know, to serve uh, first a salad, then uh, a banana sorbet, but I was teaching all these uh, volunteers how to make a sorbet with no sugar because you know Brazilians they use a lot of sugar and the sor banana sorbet they were using 55 percent of the sh of the sugar and they didn't taste so I was teaching them how to arrive at zero percent of sugar for to make a sorbet that was tasting a, a banana and we had a lot of banana leaves there left over um, the year before we were like, I was very impressed by the Mexicans and the Brazilians, how they transform banana leaves into a chutney and serve with a lot of cheeses that was, uh, that was uh, delivered by the inevitable food waste of the Universal Exposition. So um, uh, that day, I went, uh, I went to visit, uh, you know, in the favelas, all these... Uh, these uh, amazing uh, 
chef that uh, she's a Brazilian woman who was to you, she really wanted to cook for me, and I left uh, the refectorio. Unfortunately, the um, volunteers they use all the guanciale, the cheek, to make that I brought from Italy to 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 make a carbonara for 200 people at the opening. And uh, when I came back, I didn't have enough uh, cheek thread. There was no cheeks, uh, no no guanciale. So I had to do something, you know. As a chef, we have to, to solve the problem, not to create problems. So what I did, I thinking about putting together uh, knowledge, consciousness, I decided to transform uh, banana peels into bacon. And what I did, I started uh, blanching, as, uh, as they were doing the year before, the Mexicans, they were like, I was blanching the banana peels into salty water. Then I put in the oven and toast them. Then uh, with, the, with the, the, the little piece of guanciale left, I started uh, slices very thin and put on top of the guanciale peel. Then uh, put in the oven again, till the guanciale melt on top of the banana peels. At that point, I prepare outside on the street a smoking place, artigianale, no? And uh, I start smoking in the middle of the street, in the middle of the favelas in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, once uh, they were really smoked, I, without showing anyone, I brought back into the kitchen and I start shaping cubes of banana peel, lightly smoked, that taste like uh, bacon, uh, in, uh, into little cubes. In the evening, I serve carbonara for 200 people. And even the Italian delegation, they didn't realize there was banana peel and not guanciale. <laughs> so that was, that was the moment in which uh, I realized that one thing, that banana matched perfectly with guanciale, right? So after 20 times we tried to create that kind of uh, uh, finishing, for the carbonara, uh, in a, uh, we transform a carbonara into a dessert, and we, uh, following our mental palate, we get that kind of inspiration from uh, from the Rio de Janeiro project. And aspetta, dammi quale? So from the Rio de Janeiro project, and uh, we create uh, this uh, new dessert inspired in aesthetic by the artist uh, Giorgio Di Palma, the one who did uh, the cones uh, that are in our office, thrown uh, in, on top of the wall. And, um, and we transform, and it's like a, it's a banana project, you know, banana and carbonara project. So here you have uh, like uh, the yolk, the classic yolk, mixed with pepper and, uh, and vanilla. Here you have like um, the, the classic, uh, uh, banana peel uh, guanciale, uh, the banana composta, uh, the, <coughs> the ice cream that we have make ice cream uh, with, uh, um, uh, you know, like um, pecorino cheese. And uh, we put on top of the, of the, of the things, uh, we finish with uh, a form uh, of, uh, of the classic uh, yolk to make, uh, to make uh, feel like the perfect balance between uh, the pecorino that is uh, compressed into ice and uh, transform, uh, um, and, uh, and we transform the banana peel, like shaping on the side, into a cone. And uh, we finish in, uh, oops, we forget the carbonara as a finishing of the, as a dessert. This was uh, the connection on what it was, the, what we have learned serving and working at the refettorio as, as we do every night in uh, Casa Maria Luigia. Casa Maria Luigia from Tuesday to, to Saturday is transformed into Francescana with the iconic dishes. 
but we serve in a, the iconic dish in, in a very contemporary setting in which is like a theater of flavor. And uh, uh, we, we, in the world in which everybody wants to build walls, we break the walls uh, and we serve uh, the, the meal in front of them, showing all our team uh, t uh, 20, 25 years old in front of them and show them uh, what, is, uh, what it means being uh, a young, uh, passionate, amazing chef uh, in f in, uh, working a uh, three Michelin star. It's not about TV, it's not about throwing the food, but it's about love. Because cooking is an act of love. And from uh, the refettorio, we brought this idea of sharing a table, leave the phone on the side, talk to each other, even someone who you don't know, the most avant-garde thing in the world. I'm talking with someone I don't know. And, uh, and uh, experience uh, the, the idea of sharing uh, a meal. And in Francescana, it's, uh, it's about uh, a very three Michelin star, actually four Michelin star, because we have three red and one green. And uh, so four Michelin star, uh, that is like super classic, but a contemporary menu. So it's like uh, this idea of changing the perception and make everyone feel, okay, pay attention and look what we are doing. I'm leaving the, the word uh, to Jessica to finish the thing. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so the very next part of this social revolution after Food for Soul uh, happened a number of years later, and this was in 2019. Uh, this was when my best friend, her name is Caroline, she was walking down the street uh, one day, and she uh, met and eventually befriended uh, Ella. Ella, at the time, was a 25-year-old Nigerian woman. She had moved to Modena three years earlier. And after those three years and after a lot of struggles, she was still unable uh, to fulfill her dream. And her dream was quite simply being the first woman in her family to ever work. She traveled all of that way, and she was still unable to do so. So over the course of the next eight months, Caroline helped Ella find that job, uh, helped her navigate uh, the bureaucracy and all of the different barriers that presented themselves. Uh, and that's when she realized how difficult it truly was. So at the end of 2019, Caroline came to me and asked me uh, to help uh, brainstorm, find a way that we could really start helping other women in our community who were facing the same kinds of struggles uh, find jobs. And so at the beginning of 2020, uh, that's when we founded the Association for the Integration of Women. Association for the Integration of Women is an association uh, that promotes and establishes uh, job training uh, and job placements uh, for migrant women in our community. Why? Why just migrant women? Uh, after researching very much into this, especially after this encounter with Ella, we find out that migrant women uh, are one of the most disadvantaged minorities in the European Union. This is in terms of job participation and social inclusion. They're often pushed to jobs in unregulated sectors, uh, uncontrolled sectors, which results in a violation of their rights in an immeasurable loss of talent uh, and a high risk of poverty. And we couldn't sit there while women in our own community were passing by us every single day uh, who we knew that we could help. So we looked into ourselves, we said, what could we offer? Caroline was working with, with Food for Soul in Osteria Francescana, uh, already had one foot in the restaurant industry in Modena, of course, I've been working with Massimo for all of these years. So we look at, okay, what do we have? What do we have to give? What do we have to offer? And the answer was food. We have food. And how can we take this power of food and use it to bring about this change that we're looking for in our own community? So uh, we opened a restaurant. We opened a restaurant and we called it Roots. Uh, but this is no ordinary restaurant. Uh, Roots is a nonprofit restaurant in the center of Modena at which we offer uh, culinary training programs to migrant women in our community. It's a four month long program where we teach technical training skills as well as non-technical training skills, uh, tools that they'll need to integrate into the Italian workforce. At the end of their four-month training, uh, we work with a large network of different restaurants and food outlets in our community to find them uh, the right job contracts for them to then start their careers. 
Roots always remains, of course, a center of support for them. Uh, in Roots, we serve a menu. Uh, our menu is inspired by where these women are coming from. Uh, it is, of course, includes all of these technical uh, bases and foundations that will help them go and work in any other kitchen afterwards, but the dishes, we want them to reflect the origins of our trainees. Because yes, we want to integrate them into uh, the Italian work life, but we also want Italians, Modenese, people to come into our restaurant and discover the beauty of the diversity that exists in our community. So. This is what uh, we're doing with Roots. This is our beautiful space. What we know is that migration creates wealth. Uh, it creates culture. It's always been that way, and today, more than ever, we have, it needs to be that way. And we're not simply talking about uh, cultures that coexist, but about cultures that come together, uh, that contaminate each other, that feed off of each other. And only this way can we create new cultures and new flavors uh, and uh, new dishes. The dish that we're going to present today is a dish that's inspired by uh, what we believe in, the world that we're trying to build at Roots in our own community, uh, where we really want to celebrate all of this diversity to build a better future. But we also know and we're very uh, conscious of the fact that as chefs, we have a great responsibility to make the right choices in our own kitchens to bring about the change that we want to see in the world. In this case, we're taking it one step further, we're going to start talking about monoculture. Monoculture is the planting of one single seed you know, over vast areas of land all over the world, exactly as what happens with wheat. You now, to meet the market uh, demands for, you know, flour and semolina, uh, this is one of the main contributing factors to the degeneration of our soil because of its need for harmful pesticides and chemicals. Uh, it's polluting our waters. It's plummeting this world into even a deeper food crisis than we currently find ourselves in. But polyculture. This is the planting of so many different types of seeds over one area of land that changes year after year. And this is creating fertile soil. It's uh, creating self-sufficient ecosystems. This is uh, something that we can do that is helping to clean our land, our water, and our air. And this is such a powerful metaphor because the planet is telling us what to do. The planet is showing us that even in nature, diversity will save us. So what we've done here, and for this dish, is we've taken a very, very antique dish, couscous. This is a couscous has been getting served over all of the Mediterranean basin for thousands of years, as much as 8,000 years ago. But it relies on semolina flour, which we want to eliminate in this dish. We're pushing it aside, and we're making room for all of these different seeds, these different crops, because we have to remain flexible in our minds, no? open ourselves up to changing our ingredients, ch changing our ways of doing things. Not only are we doing it for the better of the planet and to promote you know, this planting of all of these different crops, uh, but at the same time, maybe we might just stumble upon the next great recipe that might become the next new tradition. So there is no semolina flour in this couscous. Instead, we're using red lentil flour, which you find here. We're using fava bean flour, chickpea flour, uh, green pea flour. And instead of your typical meat broths, we've just said, okay, what other kind of broths can we use? So in the lentil flour, we've used roasted peppers and arisa. No? In our chickpea flour, almond milk and saffron. Green peas is deep aromatic herb chlorophyll. And finally, in the fava Best. one, cacao and pomegranate. This dish, in camouflage, this dish teaches us how to look at the world in ways that we could change our different recipes uh, to create a better future. At the end of this lesson, I think that what both Massimo and I are hoping is that we all kind of sit around and ask ourselves, what do we want for the future? What, do, what is the change that we want to see? And we have to start fighting for that future, building that future, because we have the power to do so. Food is this one ingredient. It's this one thing that we all have in common. Every single person around the world has something to do with food. So this is our international language. This is the way that we can all communicate, connect with each other, so that we can bring about this change. This is the final dish, third one.
Underneath, there's a roasted and smoked eggplant, sweet and bitter almond creams, sweet dates, aromatic herbs. And then you finish it off with the almond milk. That's it. <laughs> but uh, this is very important for people who know uh, what was going on 25 years ago. I was uh, working at El Bulli. I'm saying this because we are in Spain. And, uh, you know, Ferran was doing a couscous. And he was like, created this couscous. And we were like planting all these things, mir and Eredzepi, grana cats. We were working at the same time. Think about the couscous where he went. He went here. From like a, you know, a static and uh, exercise to a very ethic uh, way to think about couscous and integrate women in the society, the most vulnerable part of the society. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we decide to create and, uh, and uh, communicate uh, something like this, because I think, uh, especially us, we have uh, a voice, and we have to raise this voice. And mm -hmm. when before I was talking about planting seeds and building bridges, this is what happened. When you plant the right seeds to the right people, there are more and more project, profitable project uh, or ethical project. And uh, as uh, it happened in Geneva, a three Michelin star, a two Michelin star chef left the, 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 the restaurant and he opened uh, a soup kitchen in uh, the most neglected neighbor in Geneva. Because he went, we went into his mind and we touched his soul with our project. Just and think about... Eh? Sorry, sorry, Jeff. No, right, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, just, <laughs> just think about everything that we're doing with our three places in Modena. It's the smallest town in Italy that you could possibly imagine. But there's Food for Soul. Now this is an organization fighting food waste and poverty, uh, protecting the environment, promoting uh, responsible production and consumption. There's Roots. Now, a place where we uh, fight for, to build resilient communities, you know, create decent job opportunities, promote race and gender equality. And then, as you said, Massimo, Osteria Francescana, Casa Maria Luigia, these are two places that are akin to Renaissance ateliers, you now laboratories for ideas, where first and foremost, we're creating culture. And now, uh, even, uh, even for, for you know, you know, we are Modena. Modena is a place uh, of tortellini. You know, it's a place for handmade egg pasta. Uh, we are like, uh, we are people that in Modena, if you don't believe in God, you always believe in tortellini. <laughs> so that's the point. You know, like uh, what we did, we, uh, we created a, a new project called Tortellante that now after five years, we have to double it, in which uh, we involve uh, the two most marginalized part of the society, the young adults uh, with uh, genetic syndrome and uh, grandmothers, so like the old grandmothers that during the first lockdown, I remember like in Bergamo, they were like, when they didn't have enough uh, ventilator, they have to decide if uh, they have to live or die because uh, they didn't have enough. So imagine my grandmother. And I think, uh, and I think these two uh, two um, marginalized part of the society now in Modena are the center of the society. They keep tradition alive because the grandmother, they can go out and explain what is the magic pesto, roll the pasta, cut in the perfect square, and these kids, they are very good on repetitive things, they make pasta, and made one after the other, after the other, and 100,000. You understand? This is the way we shape the future, okay? So the point is where all starts, it all starts from culture. Or you have culture or you don't have it. And this is the point in which I keep saying to the young generation, pushing them to study, pushing them uh, to and uh, teaching them uh, with uh, a very important exercise called Who Are You? These two are the two responsible for this project. And they, we teach them how to express themselves. Because uh, culture brings knowledge. Every day we develop knowledge. 
Knowledge leads to consciousness. Consciousness of what you have done and now you have done, done it. From consciousness to the sense of responsibility, the step is very short. And, it's all, uh, and uh, that is how we are preparing uh, our future. And in our future, there will be more future because we are born like this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Grazie. <laughs> thank you very much. Grazie. Thank you very much, Massimo. Thank you very much, Jessica. I think it was a very good example how to make a difference in this world to build together with all our knowledge, all our culture, we have a better and it's brighter a, it's future. A very important, uh, it's a very important step, you know. Once you reach uh, the top of, uh, of, this, uh, of each word, uh, you know, could be an artist, could be a poet, could be, you know, an, uh, you know a, a captain of industry, you know, could be everything, you reach the point, it's time to give back. If you have it, if you feel it, you, you, you do it. And society needs this, needs uh, your example, needs uh, uh, these good examples. And that's why uh, you, uh, you, you know, received uh, the title of uh, UN ambassador uh, for goodwill. And uh, uh, I'm giving speech for this uh, reason, because uh, the more we are, the stronger we are, the louder we will be. And uh, the, the we, we can reach uh, the you know, some a bigger audience, and we can make the difference, especially in our mother earth. Yeah. I think yeah. that's something also to consider is that, of course, we're giving examples with established foundations. We're talking about Food for Soul, Tortellante, AIW, and Roots. But sometimes it doesn't mean that we all need to go out and start this whole new foundation. It doesn't mean that we need to start this great revolution all on our own. Sometimes it's very small gestures in your day-to-day -day life. It's helping somebody or being a part of a bigger foundation or just changing little habits in our days that could really bring about this big change. So it's not about jumping into the deep, deep end. But if every person does something small every single day, then those small gestures become really big changes. And I think that that's something really important to remember so that it's a little bit less intimidating, perhaps, uh, when we go on and talk about changing the entire world, which is a pretty big world to change, but slowly but surely. Again, thank you very much. And very good to hear, especially from you as an Italian, because even the Roman people in the past did know the basic rule of economics, yeah. quid pro quo, taking <laughs> and giving. And I yeah, think these are the best words. The Romans even change the phrase of the Greek philosopher, we eat to live in uh, we live to eat. Yeah. That's very important step, very important step, because, uh, you know, they understood that uh, food and sharing a meal around the table or sharing a meal in a good party, you can really make the difference even yeah. the day after voting in, uh, in the Senate, you know, that's the point. Thank you very much, Massimo. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. And thank you very much to Thank you, you as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.